Hey guys, it's a uh, it's another cold, wet, and rainy week here in South Hill. So uh, I've been playing out here in the garage with the heat on, working on the interior panels for Wilson, the 67 VW camper. Uh, let me show you what I got going on. So when I acquired Wilson, he already came with this cool blue plaid Westy uh, interior, uh, early 70s. Uh, a little, little tag here says, Westphalia, Camp Mobile 70. Maybe the maybe the base is a 70. Don't know when you guys can correct me. But the, the back seat, the jump seat, they're already done. Uh, they didn't need to be recovered. They were real nice and clean. I did recover uh, or re replace the, you know, all the, uh, what used to be old from Micah, they were all, it was all shot. So I re repaired all that, replaced all that. And once I did all the metal work on the floors, all the floors got redone. The headliner was good, still in good shape with the wood. Um, and I just replaced some of the trim up there. But all the other door panels, uh, you know, they all were redone in birch uh, on the front and on the sides and the cargo doors and could use a little bit of sprucing up. So what I made da -da -da, is a little insert to go on the cargo doors. That one there, that one there underneath the table. All right, and I'll show you what I needed to do that. I still have to do the fronts so I can show you that process, but uh, I picked up some uh, it's 16th of an inch uh, ABS plastic sheets. It's textured on one side, smooth on the other. You get that from uh, you can get it from the big box stores. You can get it from uh, from Amazon. Uh, it's not too expensive. It mostly cost you for, for me it was the shipping because I wanted the two by four sheets. So probably the most expensive thing was the roll of you know Westy material. Uh, I got that. You can you can buy it by the yard, I believe. Um, you know, this stuff is pretty simple stuff. Um, some liquid nails, fuse at max. This stuff holds pretty good. It goes right to the ABS without an issue. Um, I did buy a new can of um, 3M90. Uh, I had the 77, but the 90 is a little bit stronger hold, so I wanted that. Some basic scissors and cutting a little, little uh, 36 grit paper. Some rubbing alcohol to wipe down the ABS before I glued everything to it. Tape. This thing took probably the most amount of time because there was a lot of measuring. And I like to make some templates out of either cardboard or paper or whatever, so I use the red rosin paper to do a lot of the template work. Um, you know, when I'm finished, you basically have a an ABS sheet. And this one was a practice one, one actually I technically I messed up on. Um, but, uh, you know, you cut it, and, you, and once you get the sheet done, and then you cover it with the material, and you make, like, your little sewing corners, and, you know, so it doesn't bind up. And I can 3M use the you know the, the Super 90 to glue everything down, and then I use the big glue in the tube, the liquid nails, and put a big bead of that and put it on here. So when I actually made I made this one first, this is the more difficult one because I had to notch around you know the uh, the latch and everything like that. So it's a couple more a couple more curves and uh, bends and corners to do. So this one I was so proud. Ah, this is going to be easy one. All I have to do is drill a hole in it, you know, cut a hole, and. Uh, Bob's your uncle was all, hey, it's all done, it's great. And I was pretty happy. And then when I closed the doors from the interior, when I closed everything up to match the one side to the other, when I had finished, they were nowhere close because I had miscalculated my measurement by a full inch. So, I mean, they're good now, but initially this was an inch off. I'm not closing them all the way. So um, it looked pretty stupid. So I will show you now what I'm working on for... The front doors so those are the cargo doors and i spent some time doing a lot of measuring honestly the measuring is what takes the most amount of time for this nonsense uh, the front seats um, i had redone by a sofine i wanted the the same material this 70s westy uh, blue plaid but um in the 70s the side bolsters would have been green vinyl and i'm not a big fan of all the green so when I talked to them over there, I said, make me, uh, do, do you use the blue? Use your best judgment. So they made uh, the blue sides for me. So I had those done um, about a year ago or so. I finally did put a, uh, a panel down there for a kick panel. But same thing, the doors are big pieces of birch wood. So I already made the side piece here. Um, and most of this time I took was me trying to measure how much of the wood I want to cover and how much I wanted to put the upholstery on. So this is uh, eight inches here, you know, a piece here. And I wanted it to go from the, you know, from somewhere below the handle, um, but above sort of the, the seat line. 
and then to go to the down down here to the bottom and then just sort of have this little uh almost factory like piece that comes down a little bit and step down a little longer so it's about 11 inches for this piece over there so um, I used the same holes I had previously to hold the, the screws when it was screwed into the wood, when it was just the wood panel onto the door. It took a little while to just measure those up. They're not factory by any sense of the word, but um, I'll show you what it takes from this point on. Well, after you've decided the size and the shape and you've got the panel cut out of the ABS, you got to do a little prep work to it. So I take my 36 grit paper and I took this little lighter, uh, maybe this is like a 220 block, and I take it over here to the ABS. I'm gonna go take the shiny side, which is the side that's gonna face outwards that gets uh, covered with the material with the uh, that's gonna get glued on, and I'm gonna sand this all up. I'm gonna scratch it all up real good, you know, with the, with the, uh, the 36 grit, just to give it a little a little bite, something for the uh, to make the mechanical adhesion work a little bit better. Um, the other side is, is already that, like I said, that... Uh, textured finish so i don't need to worry about that but i'm gonna sand this all up with the 36 i take this block here and i made sure that i took all my corners and i nice I just made sure that there's no sharp edges and corners because when you do pull the material over if there's a real sharp point it's going to want to poke through so you kind of want to round off your corners just a little bit um, so i'm going to get this all prepped up uh, with the sandpaper and then i'm going to wipe off both sides with the rubbing alcohol just to make sure there's no grease or anything else that's going to affect the uh, the glue and I'll do that all. Um, this over here is the, is the that's the door um, that had been recovered in Birch uh, about a year or two ago. Um, I remade these panels using the original wooden panels that were uh, completely shot as templates. Um, if you don't know, Wilson is not a restored bus. It is a patina bus, um, which is the look I am trying to keep and maintain. Um, and the rust has been sort of uh, encapsulated and protected. Uh, the material that I had to replace, like the wood, um, you know, I tried to get as, as best I could, but, you know, the metal, uh, where it was gone, I had no choice. I mean, the, the rockers, the inner and outer, you know, rock areas, the floor, I mean, the bottom of these doors. Uh, I haven't finished blending in the paint, but I will get to that eventually. Um, you know, all that metal work is done. There's no more surface rust, any big rust, anything structural has all been repaired. And now we're just trying to keep the look of the patina look like Wilson deserves. So um, I'm going to scratch this all up. I'm going to get it all prepped up and I'm going to cut a big piece of the Westy stuff. And then I'll head inside to grab my iron and uh, give it a little crease. And I'll show you why I want to do that. So the rubbing alcohol is drying on this side. You can see I scratched up this side pretty good, ready to go. And now I just gotta cut a piece. So just cut a big enough piece, right? No problem. But the OCD inside of me says, uh, I wanna make sure I match up the plaid kinda like I had it on the other one. Um, and when you stare at this plaid long enough, you get to see there's sort of little patterns like I call this I call this like the baby blue line. There's a light blue and a dark blue and another light blue. And this line that kind of goes across, I see it, you know, a couple different places. You know, and of course it repeats. So what I want to do is I like to have this line here, like right above it, um, this to be the top of the panel. For example, if you take a look here. You can see here was that baby blue line. All right, so the light blue, then I was like, eh, you know, the green, the dark here, and then there's, it starts this other light blue line again. So the light blue, the green, the dark blue. Um, I think this right here, this light blue line is the same as that light blue line right there. So this is where I kind of like to use as the, uh, and it's going to be hard for me to keep following. I'm gonna, this right here is where I kind of want to use the top piece or the top fold and I'm going to use the top edge of my panel so I want about two inches above that all right so wherever I can find that I'm going to find that same area and I can't do this while holding my camera and uh, the tape measure and everything else but I'm going to cut basically the whole piece off at a, at a mark two inches above that line and I'll bring it inside and I'll show you the next step all right I'm inside now on the wife's new kitchen table 
don't say anything to her. Um, I've got my material here. Um, it's raining out, so it's got some spots on it from the water, but it's no big deal. Um, you can see that the edges, um, the factory edges, you know, where they're, where it's, where it's constructed, you know, are, are a little off. So you'd never want to be at the very, very edge. This edge just comes in about, uh, about two inches or so. You can see there's a little uh, factory issues there, but so you don't want to be on the edge of that, but you want a two inch overlap that you can fold over. Um, and remember this is my, my baby blue line and I want to be, uh, remember I said green, black, blue with this light blue. This is going to be my top edge of my panel going to be my top edge there so this is where I want to have my top edge so I want to find uh, a spot where where uh, and, and these these plaid stripes are not you know a thousand percent perfect you can kind of like if you kind of look down the edge I, I see like a little wave to them here or there uh, again you got to put the OCD aside for a few minutes while you do that but you find the best spot in the middle where it's going to fit well I'm going to trim basically like I said about two inches past uh, and cut this piece more more to size, you know, that I can work with. Um, obviously, nice pair of sharp scissors. Um, and I'll, I'll work on that, and then I'll show you how we make some corners. Uh, and what do we do to get around the corners to, uh, to get it prepped up to glue back on? Now, I've cut my piece out and uh, did the best I could to try to line it up on the line that I like to be the top edge. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it where, uh, right where this blue and the black line meet, and I'm going to fold it over, okay, at that line, right at that mark, and I'm going to fold it all the way down, and I'm going to crease it with a, uh, a nice hot iron once I plug it in, get it all warm. And I'm going to make that top crease all the way down, and that's going to help me set like a little pocket in there um, so I can do up all the other measurements and sort of almost pre-fit it to a, a folded piece and uh, it makes everything a lot easier. Now you can see where I folded it over and gave it a real quick little iron, a warm iron, not too not too hot. This has like a latex sort of backing on it. Uh, almost feels like rubber. But once you crease that over with your hand, give it a quick iron right across with the warm iron, it does create this nice sharp fold which makes it real easy for you to take the piece and sort of slide it up all in there. And that's sort of like your, your 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 top edge that you're going to work with, and then you'll be able to fold up all the rest of your corners, make your corners, cut the corner pieces out, and fold all the edges in there, um, get it ready for glue. Okay, now that I've got a little bit folded up here and iron in the corners, fold over this edge, fold over that edge, put a little iron crease on it. All right, you want to cut back about a half an inch from the edge and about a half an inch from this edge, and you want to make a cut here, then fold this corner over, this piece over, and do the same thing. Cut this line through one solid piece, about a half an inch from this edge, up to about a half an inch from that edge, okay? And the reason we're going to do that is so that you can have, and then you cut the corners out, and then you'll make these nice little folded corners to take all the bulk out of it. Once you cut those corner pieces out, okay, then you have this nice piece that you can pull tight, and you glue it, and then you don't have all that bulk in the corner of your piece. And you can trim that back if you, if you don't want all this piece in there. I think I want to have a little piece down in there to, to a little extra glue. But now there won't be this big bulky piece in your corner. So it's not hard to do. Like I said, one, one cut, about a half an inch up, about a half an inch from the edge. Fold this over, same thing, half an inch up, even half an inch from each edge, and then cut the corners off. So I've made my corner cuts, made my corners like I showed you, done that all the way around, okay, put a little warm iron to it just to make the edges a little bit smoother. Um, everything seems to be lining up pretty well. Um, this corner here is sort of a, is an inside corner, which is, uh, to be honest with you, I haven't really done many of those. So I made a couple cuts in here, a relief to try to, uh, try to pull some of that. And of course, I'm going to be gluing this all in there. So I'll, you know, once I put some glue on the on the, the front side, uh, and I get this this piece glued, uh, the majority of the front side, I won't do the edges. I'll come back and I'll do that a second time, uh, to do to the back side here. But I'll put some glue here and some glue there, some of the Super 90, and then I'll pull these pieces tight and hopefully get them around that corner pretty well. Um, but I mean, you can basically see, you know. Kind of there, you know. Um, the, the, the stripes kind of line up. Oh, the stripes, the plaids line up. Can't have stripes and plaids, you know. That's definitely a, 
no, no. Uh, wait a minute, I do have stripes and plaids. I have a striped top. Oh, whatever. Um, yeah, so it just needs to be glued up. And because you put that little uh, the iron to it, you know, it sort of holds the, the shape to it. It's a lot easier to glue uh, than just having a big floppy piece of, of fabric that uh, potentially you could glue it together uh, and then have sort of this plaid line just going, you know, crazy on a weird angle or whatever. So um, that's it. Next next stop is back in the garage uh, with the adhesive after lunch. Now, the one last thing I didn't tell you is that you're going to need some cardboard to lay down when you want to glue this uh, fabric onto the ABS sheet because the 3M Super 90 spray adhesive does get past your material and gets on the floor or the workbench or wherever you're working. So I'm doing it here on the floor of the garage on a piece of cardboard that I can throw out later. I'm going to put a nice uh, coat, even coat on this side right here, not on the uh, back edge, just going to go up to the fold. And then I'm going to put a coat all over this uh, edge that I've scratched up with the 36 grit paper, which was the smooth side. And then I'll put those two pieces together. You will not see me do this, however, because I need both of these hands to do that job. And I'm not going to screw it up just for the sake of the video. So you'll have to trust me. I'm going to spray some glue and put it together and you'll see the end result. And the end result glued and screwed and on the door now. That's it one panel and it is adhesive stuck and screwed to the door i hope you like it i hope i like it because i'm going to do the other one on the driver's side now